Now let's go ahead and start taking this puppy apart. First thing you're going to do is remove the cover for the expansion slot and then remove the expansion cartridge. From there you flip it over and there's a total of five screws. One in each corner and one in the middle of the front of the console under it. After those are removed, go ahead and remove the little class protecting the other expansion port that never gets used for anything. And remove the top lid. From there, there's multiple screws. I did not count. Just go through and remove every single screw. And these screws will be flathead. Unlock, unlike the ones under it, the ones under the console, those five I spoke of earlier, you need a special screwdriver. And I'll include that in the description. But the rest of these are just normal Phillips, or you can use a small flathead to remove them. Remove the first bracket after removing all the top screws. And there will be four more screws on the edges to remove as well. After those four screws, there'll be two more close to the expansion slot near the front of the console. And those are slightly smaller than the normal Phillips. Just lift it up and out, remove the plate, remove the two brackets for the plate. And I just removed this because I wanted to see the components, so it's not necessary. So after that's all gutted, the only thing you will be using over are some of the screws. So I just kept all the screws out. Now go through if it's dirty and thoroughly clean it. I'm just using 99% isopropyl alcohol. Removing any type of um, crud, sticky stuff, labels, all that good stuff. To get it as neat and clean as possible. This is just a... Uh, a print removal tool for my 3d printer and I'm using here but you can use I mean whatever you want now these are front control ports I was speaking of earlier that I printed out had to do a little bit of um, custom scraping to get it to fit in and they fit in nicely I did a test closure, closed well. And I'm moving on to the Raspberry Pi mount. I did not record this being printed. Now this mount is actually not, it fits all the screw ports for it to be mounted inside of the actual case itself properly. But the size where the Pi is supposed to go, the screw um, holes do not line up. That was a little disappointing. After putting the rear panel in place, I did another test fit. You should do the same as well whenever adding new components to make sure everything still sets together flushly. And that worked out well for the ports and the rear. All right, took it back apart. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start wiring up one LED light to replace the one that's the front of the Nintendo 64. I went with the purple LED. All I'm doing is soldering a 10K resistor to the positive side of the LED, which is the longer part that protrudes out, and wiring a red cable for a positive to the positive side and the black cable for negative to the negative side, which is the shorter side of the LED. After that, I wired it to the coinciding pins on the Raspberry Pi itself, the five volt pin. I will leave a link in the description to let you know where the pin is at. There is a diagram online on a, a Raspberry Pi website so you can know which pin to use for things like this. After that, I have a HDMI extension cable. I'm cutting and shielding off the HDMI extension cable to fit through the holes and easier and to make it a little more flexible. And this will protrude out the back of the N64 so I can easily plug it into a television.
after placing the rear bracket back on the back, I ran the HDMI cable through to see if it comfortably fit. And I taped off some of the frayed wiring with some Captain tape. From there, I wired the small fan that I had laying around to help keep it cool after placing the heat sink over the Raspberry Pi processor. Because I do plan on overclocking this, so some systems like Dreamcast will run a little better. So if you're going to overclock it, make sure you have a fan and a heat sink because this does void your warranty. Using a couple of screws, I just screwed the fan back directly into the heat plate and then I did a test boot make sure the fan was running directly from the Raspberry Pi and I did a test fit with the N64. Again I will leave the pin layout for which um, GPIO pins to use for the fan and for the LED. From there I wired up four USB extension cables that are 10 feet long. And I used a little hot glue to hold the LED in place and to do a little bit of wire management. From there, I took the, the USB ports that I printed and I cut slits into them so the USB cables can um, seep through easily. I was going to cut the shielding off the USB cables, cut them down and run them through properly. Um, just like it was done on Thingiverse, but I decided I wanted longer cables and I didn't want to cut anything down. Um, and it cut the time probably more than the half. Now it's time to do a test boot before sealing everything up. I want to make sure everything runs smoothly without any issues. The game I decided to go ahead and test out is Crash Bandicoot. Everything is running great. Time to improperly power it down by just yanking the plug out. And it's time to get everything all sealed up. Now I use just a little bit of hot glue to hold these in. A couple of dabs just so I can easily close without any issues. they do wiggle a little bit until it's completely closed and they're secured really tightly between the grooves that are already set in the 64. So all I'm doing is the reverse from what we did earlier. Let's run all the screws in. I place the HDMI back into, um, into place snugly in the rear. Put the bottom expansion slot lid back on and using my 3D pin, I sealed around the HDMI hole just to make it more secure. 
This process took about six minutes, maybe a little less. I ordered a total of four Metricom controllers. There were $11.99 on sale on Amazon. They are Bluetooth compatible, but I did have issues connecting them via Bluetooth. So I went ahead and just stuck with the wire route because it has an option for both. They actually have the same setup as an Xbox 360 controller and emulate it on any PC as well. It reads as an Xbox 360 controller and it has a comfortable fit like a PlayStation controller. All right, folks, that's all for this build. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.